please welcome the commander of Maui's home team, the 15th Space Surveillance Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Wagenbach, to introduce our next speaker. All right, good afternoon, everybody. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, the commander of Space Delta II, Colonel Mark Brock. This unit is headquartered at Peterson Space Force Base, Colorado. Colonel Brock commands the Space Domain, Domain Awareness Delta, spanning the globe with personnel in 10 locations, supporting missions in four countries. Del 2 is responsible for preparing and presenting assigned and attached forces for the purpose of executing combat-ready space domain awareness operations to deter aggression and, if necessary, fight to protect and defend the U.S. and our allies in attacks from attack in, through, and from space. Please welcome Colonel Brock. I'd like to thank you for uh, coming back after lunch. Um, and I just want to thank all of you right now uh, for not falling asleep over the next 20 minutes as you have your post-lunch uh, you know, coma that we typically get. So thank you ahead of time for, uh, for your attention. So I want to take this opportunity to talk about some of the, the changes going on in Space Delta II that support this mission area. There's been a lot of evolution, uh, evolutionary change within the Space Force over the last several years, and General Gutlein uh, alluded to some of that. But I want to walk you through some of the details of what we're doing to keep up with the contested and congested domain. So the challenges in SDA today. I think the vast majority of the, the folks in this room are tracking these issues. We have adversary threats in the domain that we are working to, to outpace. And I'm not gonna go through the eaches because I think we're all aware of them. But the challenges we have in the contested domain are happening, happening simultaneously as we have unprecedented growth in the congested domain. Growth in the catalog, the advent of mega constellations, and then the push to move uh, considerable capability out to XG or cislunar. And we have a responsibility to provide the awareness both in LEO, GEO, and cislunar, or, and XGEO, in response to both the contested and congested domain. And so due to these challenges, we've had to make some major changes within uh, this, the services space enterprise and how we're organized and the tasks that we've assigned our units to get after these challenges. And I'm gonna walk you through some of those. So this is Space Delta II. It is a small but mighty organization. If you're familiar with this enterprise, uh, all space surveillance or space situational awareness when we were under the Air Force fell under the 21st Operations Group. The 21st Operations Group was the second largest operations group in the United States Air Force. It spanned the globe. It had over 21 different organizations. It did missile warning, it did electronic warfare, and it did space situational awareness. As you would not be surprised, that space situational awareness at the time was the third priority. We did not have a colonel or a staff focused on advancing this mission. And so with the advent of the Space Force and the stand-up of Space Delta II, we have a singular organization that's focused on both the sensors and the needs for sensing in the domain and the command and control of those capabilities to get after the challenges we have in space domain awareness. And I'm gonna walk through some of these. I'm not gonna walk you through an org chart though because it is after lunch. So I wanna talk about some of the mission realignment for those four squadrons that you saw on the previous chart. So we have two mainline squadrons that are responsible for the sensors that we have, uh, that we operate within Space Delta II. And so the first is the 15th Space Surround Squadron, which is headquartered here. Colonel Wagenbach just got up. Thank you for that. Um, so the 15th Space Surround Squadron was actually born out of AFRL DET-15. And so we took the GEODS telescopes, which were assigned to the 20th Space Surround Squadron, and we moved those underneath the 15th SPSS, creating an optic center of excellence. But it's more than that. We have some of the smartest folks in optics here at Maui, working in support of the, the systems at Haleakala. Those, that team is there to not only operate the GEODS that we have across the globe, but also to take the cutting edge R&D capabilities that's under Colonel Wagenbach's charge and try to take those capabilities and push them into operations as quickly as possible. 
And so we've seen vast um, capability deliveries just in the short time since May of, of this year. We're leveraging some, some novel R&D capabilities, some networks, some uh, uh, telescopes to support some pressing operational requirements and fill some capability gaps. And we expect that to continue over the next several years under Colonel Wagenbach's uh, leadership and others. And so the key to this organization is it's actually uh, a a fused or blended organization where there's an AFRL component and a an, uh, SPOC or operations component working under a single commander to meet those objectives. Uh, the 20th, so 20th Space Surround Squadron out of Eglin, used to be the 20th Space Control Squadron, operating the Eglin radar. That, that has not changed. Uh, they're still operating that magnificent radar. Um, but what we've done is we've actually moved the space fence operations, which used to be contracted run, uh, out of Huntsville closed up the Huntsville facility and moved the Space Fence Operations Center inside the Eglin radar. And so if you have the, the chance to go to Eglin and walk inside the ROP Center, you'll see Space Fence operators and Eglin radar operators side by side working together. That is a precursor to a, the Integrated Radar Operations Center, which we expect to deliver or, or uh, field or stand up um, within the next year. And so that Integrated Radar Operations Center will be our Consolidated Radar Operations Center for us to operate Space Fence, the Eglin radar, and uh, the Deep Space Advanced Radar capability, which should come on uh, mid-decade. And so any other radar systems that come along that are presented to Space Delta II, we would operate those from that one fused center with operators. And then, of course, we've done some great advancements with Space Fence that you're probably aware of with uh, upgrading coherent integration and allowing us to get after uh, more precise deep space tracking with that system, which is especially critical um, in the Indo-PACOM AOR. A lot of movement on our Space Defense Squadron Federation. So for those of you that have been around for quite some time, you're you're familiar with the hub and spoke model for us maintaining a catalog and tasking out the sensors. Uh, it's been done at N Air Force Base for years, then it moved to Cheyenne Mountain, one CACS, the first space control squadron. That function then moved out to Vandenberg. I actually had the pleasure to be part of that process years ago and got subsumed by the JSPOC. And then the 18th SD, uh, Space Control Squadron stood up in 2016. Regardless of who owned the mission of maintaining a catalog and directing the sensors and doing that advanced analysis, it was always a hub and spoke model. There was really one center of excellence to do all that work. We hadn't federated at all. We did have Dahlgren, uh, which, uh, you know, with the last couple decades stood up as a backup, well, a partial backup of some of that functions or some of those functions, but we really hadn't changed the paradigm. But given the challenges we have with both the contested and congested domain and the limited number of personnel we have, a very small service, we knew we had to start federating some of that work. And so we saw a lot of this, uh, so we, we started to task some of these organizations that we have a little bit differently and we stood up a new organization. So the 18th moving forward, their focus is on really prioritizing the unknowns. We maintain the authoritative catalog, but the, we need to use that authoritative catalog to really drive down the noise floor and find what are the unknowns and then turn those unknowns into knowns as quickly as possible to determine is the adversary hiding amongst those unknown objects. Um, they are a lead for mission planning. So enterprise-wide, uh, they're going to work with the 18th DET-1, which I'll talk about, and 19th, to really orchestrate uh, sensor planning and sensor tasking to get after our enterprise-wide needs. Um, they're focusing on Intel integration. We're moving a 24-7 Intel capability out to the 18th, where we're going to have right seat, left seat capability, where we can actually use, in real time, IC SDA capabilities to augment and inform what we're doing in space domain awareness. And then I think everybody's tracking this thing called mega constellations. They're a bit of a challenge for us, and we've stood up a 24-7 operation out there to support mega constellation launch and tracking. They're doing all the other things we've done in the past uh, with really one wrinkle, and you'll see, I'll talk about that in a second when I talk about the 19th. Um, so, 18th DET-1. I talked about the 18th, focusing on those unknowns. Uh, the 18th DET-1 is going to stand up inside the National, or has stood up inside the National Space Defense Center and is going to go 24-7, hopefully by the end of the year, to first augment and then hopefully uh, support a orderly transfer of the function within the NSDC to characterize and maintain custody of known threats. And so that will transfer to be more of a service function outside of the, the NSDC so they can focus on other responsibilities they have. Simultaneously, at the 19th, which we stood up earlier this year as well, um, the 19th, 
we've really focused them to be our innovation sandbox. And if you get the chance to go out there, we've got an entire organization now that's really shifting to get after some of the innovative challenges we've got in the SDA arena. SSC hosts a sandbox out there where we can actually bring in contractors, they can use live data and get feedback from our operators in near real time. Uh, we've also outsourced our delta level innovation efforts to the 19th. And so if you're, if you're sitting in your seat and you're thinking, hey, I really want to get something to Colonel Brock because he might be interested in using it in operations, I'm just going to tell you to go talk to the 19th because they're our, our front door for all the innovative efforts. And they vet those ideas, they work with our, uh, our friends in industry, and they come to me with recommendations. So in that light, uh, last November, we realized that we needed a, an SDA capability for XGO, and so we turned to our innovation hub. We turned to the folks at Dahlgren. And so they've spent the last eight, nine months now uh, working to develop the relationships, understand the science, um, work to identify the sensors, the compass, the capabilities, really to drill down into what are our requirements to develop an operational capability to do SDA or SSA in the XGO or cislunar Cis realm. And so they've supported launches already um, and they're, they're poised to support, uh, support Artemis when Artemis gets the chance to get off the ground. And so that's great work that's happening out at, at 19th. And so again, if you, if you come to me saying uh, you want to you know, talk about uh, XGO or cislunar, um, I'm probably going to have you talk with our folks out at the 19th who are doing fantastic work with that. Um, the change I mentioned earlier about the 18th, so the 18th is no longer doing our CA mission. Um, they are the front door for US Space Command for uh, all our data sharing requirements, but the actual nuts and bolts of doing conjunction assessment, launch COLA, that's actually moved out to Dahlgren. Um, and so that gives them another 24 seven mission. Um, that is a precursor to the work we're uh, underway with uh, Department of Commerce to transfer some of those responsibilities here over the next several years. Um, but as you'll notice on the slide, and I, I bring this out, uh, point this out, uh, our support to NASA still retain, uh, remains out of, the, uh, out of the 18th for CA and launch COLA. And then finally, there are other missions that remain unchanged. And so finally, where are we going? So that's where we are today, but there's a lot of work to be done. Um, we need a modern command and control system. Um, so I started this uh, mission area 24 plus years ago. There's a thing called SPADOC. Uh, every single point in my career, the SPADOC replacement's been five years away. Um, and I'm hoping it's not five years away today. And I think our, our professionals at SSC are doing their best to get us uh, onto a modern, scalable C2 system so we can really move forward and utilize some of the capabilities that our industry partners are trying to deliver to us. Um, we need to integrate and exploit non-traditional and commercial data. There has been a push against this to a certain extent within our own enterprise, and I've been pushing back on that. We need our commercial partners. We need the data that you have, and we need to figure out how to use that data, integrate that data, and leverage it. It provides us resiliency. It provides us redundancy. It fills in our gaps. Um, we are not getting more money anytime soon for this mission area. And so we need to figure out, just like General Gutlein said, you know, basically buy what's available, and, and there it is. Um, space environmental monitoring. Uh, according to our doctrine, our service doctrine, SCM is part of space domain awareness. And so we're working with the 57th Weather Wing to figure out how more we, where we can more closely integrate both traditional SDA as we see it, the evolution of SDA to support uh, space superiority, and then also the environmental monitoring capabilities that the Air Force has retained. Uh, I mentioned XGO. We need to get from where we are today to a, a, a viable 24-7 operation where we can maintain custody of, of of objects in XGO, but also to find them when we lose them, because we will invariably lose them based upon just the science alone. And then finally, uh, we're going to continue to work with our DOC friends to help them stand up a uh, space, space flight safety function and transfer that capability to them so we can offload some of that work from our team and then refocus our efforts on supporting some of the challenges we have in the domain. And so with that, I have left myself with seven minutes for questions. So I should have walked, talked slower. <laughs> so, sir, can you hear me? Gotcha. We have one question from the audience. It's from Karen Fishburn. For the Allied radars, for example, the Japan DSR that will be collaborating with the U.S. Will tasking requests for the Allies come from CSPOC or 20th? So the tasking requests, and they are requests, and that's an important thing to point out, will come from the 18th. 
Now, that relationship will be codified by the CSPOC as to how we're going, you know, what types of requests and what the, you know, what the tempo would be. But when we speak to, like, the ad hoc request to track certain objects, uh, I envision that coming directly from the 18th. That's the only question we had, sir. Wow. Oh, no, we just got a new one. Uh, so we just got a question from Christopher Spitzer. Uh, what is your timeline to have Syslunar SSA capability in place? That's a great question. So I asked uh, Lieutenant Colonel Smith, who's the commander of the, the 19th SDS, to report back to me, and so I can report back to the service, both at the SPOC, Space Operations Command, and General Gutlein's team and our headquarters, report back to us in the spring time frame to identify the, the requirements that we have, or he's identified, to actually create an operational capability. And so he should report back to me with those, what are the training needs, you know, the, the tech, uh, the procedural requirements, the sensors, et cetera, uh, hopefully by the April, May timeframe. Uh, following that, you know, the timeframe to have a viable capability is really dependent upon the resourcing that we have as a service. There's a lot of capability that's available today from a ground-based perspective. And with the UDL providing a, a data transport capability, I think we can get a lot of the data to a centralized node to actually analyze it. But we need a space-based capability to really uh, provide the surveillance of XGO or Cislunar. And so I can't give you a time frame for when that is. I'm, there are some R&D capabilities that are uh, being developed by AFRL uh, that'll be launched in the next several years. But to really have a long-term viable operational capability, it's going to take it's going to take will and it's going to take resourcing. And so I, I can't answer a specific time other than we will be postured, hopefully within the next several years, to utilize the sources that are available to perform that mission. Now we got questions rolling in, sir. Uh, from Teresa Hitchens, can you explain how you can better integrate commercial data? Sure. So uh, we have spent the last year plus uh, putting the connectivity in place for us to actually take commercial data out of the UDL and put it into our program of record. Um, so to pump it into CaveNet, which hosts uh, ASW, and that'll allow us to actually utilize that data. That was really step, step one. Uh, step two to that process is finding a way to really curate and small v validate the uh, accuracy and consistency of the data. And so we're working with SSC right now to uh, do a demonstration with three different sensors where we can actually perform that function and see if we can use a third party to understand the quality and consistency of the data. And hopefully we'll have that done by the end of the year. Uh, the third part is funding, right? And so without consistent funding, you really don't have a reliable operational capability. And so um, we're waiting on the results of the uh, FY23 uh, budget. Um, but hopefully the budget will have consistent funding for us to purchase uh, that data. And, and so that last piece is the hardest. It's a Congress thing. It's way out of my control. Uh, but hopefully uh, we do get the budget here shortly. Next question is from Thomas Kubansik. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, what role do you see from the International Partners for XGOSSA? Tom, you had to ask me a hard question. Um, <laughs> I think I meet with him later. I might skip that meeting now. Um, so, so I think right now for our international partners, I, I fear that there's not much. So I've, I've had a lot of discussions with uh, some of our allies, and they're working very hard to develop their own organic SDA capabilities. But just given the sheer cost, it's going to be a challenge for our allies. It's not to say I don't want them to help us in XGO. But I really think that the goal that, at least from the allies I've talked to, is they're really more focused on geo and below, given the limited resources they've got. Um, if they do have resources and they are interested, probably the best opportunity is ride shares with some of the various different um, uh, opportunities that are going out to the moon and beyond. Uh, Caitlin Johnson just asked, do you think the SDA mission's importance has grown or changed with the foundation of the Space Force? Oh, it's, it's grown. So you, just the fact that I'm here um, and I'm not at, back at home answering questions about missile warning radar that continually break or dealing with electronic warfare questions, um, it has grown immensely. So every single senior leader 
in our organization is focused on space domain awareness. Um, I have had multiple conversations directly with the vice CSO. It's a highlight issue for him. It's an issue for the CSO. You heard General Gutlein speak earlier. We never had this attention from a military perspective, I think, until the last several years, and we stood up a singular organization focused on this mission area. And that's a direct result of having a Space Force. And from Joe Coughlin, what is your vision for data management across the SPOC? For data management? Yes. So that's, a, that's a actually, uh, I'm going to turn the question back a little bit. So data management uh, within the service is actually held at the service level uh, through the CTIO office. And so it's not necessarily a SPOC issue to manage data. Uh, the vice CSO has directed us to release as much data as possible. Um, and we're doing that to push as much data as we possibly can per his direction to the Unified Data Library where it's discoverable and where we can utilize it to develop tools that'll help us with our mission. But the management function is really more of at the headquarters level through CTIO. And they're still working through their management process for that. Jeff Faust asked, what challenges are you dealing with in the transfer of civil space flight safety functions to commerce? None. So Mr. Dalbello, if he's in the room, has been a fantastic partner. Um, and we are committed 110% to helping the DOC establish their function. They, they have a lot of work to do to secure funding, determine exactly what, when they want to roll out capability. Um, but we are side by side with the DOC to help them as much as we possibly can from a technical perspective, processes, um, and so none. One last quick question from Garrett Kennedy. With the collection of and demand for SDA data increasing, how are you addressing the aging data line infrastructure? So we're not addressing it as fast as we want to. Um, so it is, it is a, a challenge that we've got where we're transmitting data kilobytes per second. Um, there are some efforts within SSC to do some um, demonstrations of uh, some net centric capabilities, um, other demonstrations to you know, utilize new comm paths, but none of those are programs of record. And so we've been pressing hard within our command and uh, asking Space Systems Command to do the best they can to upgrade our, what I call our ground game. So we've got the bandwidth to actually take some of the data types we need to characterize the threats in the domain. But it's, it's not moving as fast as we would like it to. And I am out of time. So thank you all for your attention.